Okay, um, what we're going to start doing now is talk a little bit about the development kit that we provide at AIT to support the development of avionics um, applications that support you know the loadable software. So basically the the data load application on the avionics or embedded computer um, side. So first part we're talking about here is in the blue box in the slide that you're seeing. Um, so what you see there is is a, a, a a user or a customer defined application which utilizes in yellow the AIT provided uh, target 615A library and also we provide access directly to TFTP file transfers with the TFTP uh, library that supports both client and server operations. And then um, these libraries can can be configured and given configuration parameters from files that are created off the avionics system using our, our graphical user interface tool which also happens to be our, our data loader and media set editor uh, same software application also that that um, that configuration GUI is, is like I said that's that's what's used to create the media sets it's what we showed before and um, additionally we also provide a media compiler compiler so it's a command line um, application that's used to um, create the media sets so that it can be done if, if you have to do like mass creations um, it can be done in a batch okay uh, the key part of our target software development kit is our, our API library that does and handles the target operations so it provides a public API that uh, a user defined or a user created application can use it's uh, a C API and it's provided with uh, documentation which I'm showing here so complete documentation for all the functions in the API also samples um, documented samples that show how to use the API with uh, you know links to all the, the the detailed documentation for each of the the C functions that are exist in the API so what what this API does is it basically provides handling of all the 615a specific protocol details so it abstracts from the application the need to encode, say, the LUI file or the status files or to decode the list of loads, the LUR files. So all of the like protocol-specific handling is handled in the library, and it provides just a high-level, um, easy, I guess, operations to the target application to basically get notifications when a operation is requested and to get a notification when it's done so that the application could then go pick up the loaded files and do you know whatever it needs to with them. But the idea is that all the details of the load protocol in 615A are handled in the library and abstracted from the, 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 the avionics specific application. So some of the, the events and notifications that can be provided by the API is it, it provides an event um, to notify the application when an operation is requested, so when a user of a data loader connects and tries to request an operation. Um, also, it provides um, you know, an indication when, say, an upload. Um, has been requested and, and it tells you what LSPs that that, that, that upload um, is requesting to load and then an indication of when the loads complete um, what the target API also does is after all the files have been transferred it will also do all the verification so it will check the CRCs against the header files associated with them and and not require the application to, to implement and do this it will simply get the files check the CRCs and indicate whether they're okay or not to the application Uh, next, if we look here, uh, what we'll show is to just give you kind of an idea of, of what, what has to happen in the target application. So this is the user application, uh, and then what calls it has to make into the target API to execute the load operations. So just kind of give you an idea of the flow of how the, this, this target C API works. So first thing that has to happen is uh, you have to configure the API. So this is configuring things uh, like the... Um, the period, so how often the status files are sent, what some of the timeouts are that are used, what version of the 615A protocol we want the target API to use. Um, so this, there's a simple function call that passes in this configuration information, and this configuration information is just comes in the form of a file which is created uh, using our, our data loader GUI, uh, you know, application that we were looking at before. So you can define all these timeouts, save them to a file. Then the target application uses that file and basically just writes it into the API to configure timeouts and all those configurable items for the protocol. The target API can actually support um, multiple logical target operations. So what that means is you can have the API act like, uh, you know, present itself to the data loader as multiple uh, different LRUs. 
So what that means is um, you have to open and get a handle to each of those uh, logical uh, target side uh, processes in the API. So you have to do a target open to get a handle to that, which is used by your application for all subsequent operations. Once that sort of setup is done uh, with the target API, what happens next is once the data loader requests an operation, so an operation comes in from the network, um, the target API will receive this, and it will generate an event to the application to indicate that there's a data loader requesting an operation. And based on the return code of that event function, the, the target app, the user-defined app, can indicate to the target API if it accepts the operation or not. At that point, if it's accepted, um, the, the target API will encode and send the LUI file indicating this to the data loader and, uh, and then go on with the operation. Um, as we talked about with the load upload, what would happen next after it's accepted is the, the data loader would send a the list of loads or an LUR file to the target. So the target API will receive that, uh, decode it, and basically provide in a callback uh, the indication of the part number, et cetera, of, of each of the LSPs that the, the data loader is requesting to load. And then the target app can, can respond to the API with whether it accepts those or not. Once <clears throat> all the exception or denial of the requested loads are done, basically we go into a, a, a process here where the target API handles all the, the 615A specific details. So it's going to go do all the read requests of the header files and the data files, et cetera. And also it's not shown in the, in the drawing because there's no host interaction required here. The target API will also be running the thread that's sending the periodic status to the data loader. Once all the files have been transferred, the user application gets a simple event saying all files are transferred. Uh, and then also uh, another event indicating load complete and whether it's completed successfully or not. Uh, so both of these then indicating to the target app that the LSPs have been loaded and now you can go get those files and do anything application specific you need with them, whether it be transfer them into Flash or restart certain applications or threads within the avionics application that use the new files. As we said, um, both the, the 615A target API and the, the TFTP API uh, have these configure functions that are used to input you know, specific configuration information um, about how they're supposed to operate the protocols. Um, so for TFTP, for instance, that would define like block sizes. So what, what size you're chopping large files up into to transfer them. Timeouts, retries, you know, how, how long you're going to wait to retry a, a message that doesn't get acknowledged. How many times you're going to retry a message that doesn't get acknowledged and also a well-known port, which port the server is listening on for incoming requests. Same type of parameters for 615A, the 615A library. So things like the status period, how often we want to have the library send the status information to the data loader. And also the storage location for load files. So where, when we receive an LSP, do we want to store it on the local uh, avionics system? And then also we provide an option where the API can be pre-programmed with the list of LSPs that it's able to accept. And so what we can do is take, out, take the load off the application to decide when an LSP is requested whether to accept it or not. And we can put that, um, we can have that be part of the configuration of the API. So it's predefined to know what to accept and what not to accept so that the application, the user-defined application, does not even have to, to process that in real time. Um, this configuration data is defined using you know, a Windows application. Again, it's, it's the same GUI that we use for our data loaders. Or you can also define this, this data in XML directly. And then the APIs provide a simple, single function to load that information contained in those files into the API. <coughs> so as I said, we, we provide a GUI uh, that you can do, you can use to point and click and create uh, those settings. So you can see a, a snapshot of it here. So you can create multiple targets. For each target, um, you can define the, the target ID and the position, uh, the status period, like I said, which version of the protocol it, it is compliant with, et cetera. And also, optionally, you can define all of the LSPs and for each LSP all of the load files that that associated target is pre-programmed to accept. And so the way it works is that if um, an incoming request comes in for a load file that's not in this list that wasn't configured, uh, the target API will provide an event notification to the user application to say, hey, we've received a request to load an LSP that's not part um, of this, of, of what's in our configuration, and then we provide the application the opportunity to accept or deny or to deny that um, read request. So that includes our um, overview and, and discussion of 615A loadable targets and the, the target SDK that we provide at AIT.